So take an elliptic billiard uh, shown here in black. Uh, this one in particular has aspect ratio 1.5. Uh, you can animate that so we can see the family. Let it run slowly and smoothly. And uh, let's go ahead and consider, for example, the tangent or outer polygon to uh, this family, right? Uh, so this is the polygon defined, uh, which has sides which are tangents to the, in this case, five periodic tangent to the ellipse at the five periodic vertices, right? So we can observe that. In fact, there's a third associated, directly associated polygon, which is the inner polygon. And uh, to understand this one, we're going to go ahead and draw the confocal caustic, this brown confocal ellipse, which is not homothetic to the billiard. They have different aspect ratios. But we can also define a third polygon shown red here. Uh, the points of tangency between the five periodic and its caustic. So we got this trio, okay, of polygons. Now there's something really interesting already uh, happening here. If we show, for example, their areas. So let A define the area of the n periodic. A prime define the area of the outer uh, uh, polygon, and A double prime define the area of the inner polygon. Uh, it becomes clear here that as we uh, traverse the family, uh, three, two uh, neat things happen. Uh, though none of the three areas are, are constant, the, prod, uh, the ratio of the outer area by the end periodic area, A prime divided by A, is invariant. And as is the ratio of the blue area, A divided by the inner area, A prime prime. You can see these numbers are not changing. In fact, they are the same. So not only are they invariant, they are the same. Uh, if I change the aspect ratio of the beater, I make it more circular. For example, uh, the ratios continue to be invariant and the same. If I make the beater be more eccentric, uh, like that, again, I have a very eccentric uh, black beater here. I can see that the ratio of outer by n periodic and n periodic by inner not only are they invariant, they are the same. There are, are interesting uh, projective geometry uh, discussions and proofs that have been uh, uh, made uh, based on this phenomenon. But actually, the phenomenon I want to talk about in this video is uh, something more subtle. It's the following. Let's go ahead and bring the aspect ratio of the billiard back to 1.5. Okay. Oh, yeah. Before I advance, let's go ahead and change and from an odd number to an even number. For example, n equals 6, just before I leave this discussion. As I iterate now through the family, you will see that something somewhat reverse happens. Now, the product of outer area and n periodic area is invariant, and the product of n periodic with the red inner polygon is invariant. They are not uh, immediately related. As far as we can tell now, there could be some relationship at play here. And again, part of these phenomena have already been proven, so we can see that as we go to n equals 7, another odd number, uh, you, get, you get the previous phenomenon, and I have to make the builder become more uh, eccentric here so we can see the variation, because as n grows, uh, these uh, n periodics become more of a whispering gallery, they, be, they approach uh, the boundary of, of the billiard, then you get less variation on areas and whatnot. But as we increase uh, the eccentricity of the billiard, uh, you can see here that though the three areas are still varying, n equals 7, that's an odd number, so ratios are preserved and equal, products are not. If I go back, for example, to n equals 4, that's an even number, even number preserves the products very well. Okay, so <coughs> let's go ahead and talk about the phenomenon. What is the phenomenon at hand here? The phenomenon at hand is not related to the inner polygon, and for now we're going to forget about the orbit itself. I'm not going to even talk about it for a second. Okay, what we're interested in is defining a point M. Let's go back to n equals 5. 
in the plane, on the plane of the elliptic billiard, and I can place this point anywhere. Okay, this point M. And what I'm interested in describing here is what happens when I drop N perpendiculars from M onto the sides of the outer polygon. So you can see the perpendiculars dropped here. They don't always fall on the sides themselves. For example, if I change a little bit the aspect ratio here, you will see that there are some cases where uh, the perpendicular itself falls on an extension of a side, okay? For example, this one here is falling on an extension, this one here too, although these other three are falling on the middle, smack in the middle of, of these three sides here. Now, all this means is that I have to extend the side, but what I want to keep from this discussion are the feet of these perpendiculars, which are uh, highlighted here with little green dots, okay? And I want to draw a polygon. Okay, that connects the five feet of these perpendiculars. And what I want to analyze the properties of this polygon. One thing that you notice, and let the area of this polygon be denoted A sub M prime. As you can see here, whenever I talk about prime quantities, I'm referring to the green tangential polygon. So let the area of this green polygon be denoted by A sub M prime. Now let's go ahead and animate this. First thing you notice is that this area is variable, okay? You also notice that the product of areas is varying and the ratio of areas is varying. Now, I have n equals five. Let's go ahead and plug in n equals six. Now, notice what happened. All of a sudden, the area of this green polygon, though variable, when multiplied by the area of the tangential polygon is invariant. You can see that there is a 55.32. So it looks like we're getting invariance of these areas for any position of M. Let's go ahead and move M here, put it somewhere else uh, outside the billiard, for example. So I got these concavities. And you can continue to see here that there's this invariance, right? Now this is happening for an arbitrary uh, position of M, that invariance because n is an even number. When I have an odd number, for example, n equals five, you don't get that, except if I place m at the center of the billiard, in which case the product is invariant. Now it's gonna be invariant for both n even and n odd. So it's invariant here, it's invariant there. Okay, now for n equals four, for some reason, I'm not getting invariance. This is kind of a special case. I'm getting variance on the ratio, but not on the product. If I go to n equals three, I get invariance on the product again. All right? So there's many phenomena at play here. Now, let's go ahead and place M on a focus. Here's M at a focus. No invariance of products whatsoever, right? Now let's go ahead and switch n to n equals four. Look at what's happening. The ratio of areas of this green polygon, which is a rectangle, this is related to the circle of Monge, Monge, Monge's circle. Uh, the, uh, the locus of these vertices is not shown as a circle, but uh, it is known that the family of four periodics is a parallelogram and the tangential polygon as a rectangle and the vertices of the tangential polygon move along a circle. But the new phenomenon here is that the ratio of uh, this rectangular area and this pedal polygon is stuck at two. If I move A, that number doesn't change, okay? If I change the aspect ratio of the billiard, I continue uh, with that ratio. Now let's see what happens with that ratio when I'm at an even, uh, but not four, even six. The ratio is no longer constant. However, the product is. Let's go to seven. Neither is constant. Let's go to eight. Now the ratio is constant. So it looks like I get constant ratio at n equals four and n equals eight and I get constant product at n equals six, there it is, and n equals 12. No, I'm not getting n equals 12. Let's go to n equals 12, 10. Let's exacerbate this here. 
Yes. So looks like I'm getting constant product at n equals 10 and n equals 6. There it is. 6 and 10. And I'm getting constant ratio at 4 and 8. So it looks like they are both related to uh, something mod 4, except that one is n minus 2 mod 4, and the other one is just n mod 4. So this is really cool. Now, here's another phenomenon that was actually the original topic, and I ended up uh, taking a few short uh, few uh, detours here. The original topic here were some considerations regarding the center of mass of these polygons. So uh, let's go ahead and reduce the aspect ratio. Let's go ahead and make this guy a little tighter here on the screen so we can see the uh, phenomenon a little better. Good. Now I'm going to go ahead and move this guy around again. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to compute the average of these five vertices. This is called uh, sort of the zeroth order uh, uh, center of mass. So I'm just simply going to uh, average these guys out. And I'm going to just display it on the screen. There it is. So this is the average of these five points okay let's go ahead and animate the family the center of mass is invariant what happens if i move this point around center of mass moves with it but once you fix m it remains constant what's fascinating about this is that at n equals five uh, m is not at the focus nor is it at the center of the billiard so i'm not getting any invariance here Okay, uh, in terms of the area of this uh, pedal polygon or its product or its ratio with the green uh, tangential polygon. But what's, what is invariant here is the position of its center of mass. Let's interrupt this for a second and let's now investigate similar things with a polygon defined by the feet of the perpendiculars onto the end periodic itself. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off the outer so we focus. On this more basic phenomenon here. Uh, so here's the pedal polygon. This guy here has less harmony with, uh, in terms of invariance than the outer one, but let's go ahead and look at what they are. So as I animate this, I can see here, for example, that its area, A sub M, and now it doesn't have a prime, is not constant, neither is this product or this ratio. Very well. Uh, how about its center of mass? Well, its sense of mass is not constant. It's moving. We're investigating the loci of these centers of mass, and it looks like many of them are circular. Some of them are not. Now, what happens if I locate M at the center of the billiard? If I locate M at the center of the billiard, its center of mass is still orbiting around it. We believe this is a circle. Uh, we're going to come back with uh, more results along uh, those lines. But uh, what you can see here is something magical happens. All of a sudden, the product of areas has become invariant. So this product over here, because this guy is at, right at the smack at the center of the billiard, has become invariant. So you know you can take this down to n equals three, right? And you have a simpler kind of phenomenon that might be described as uh, the product of the areas of the pedal triangle to a three periodic with a three periodic is constant. So this is what you, you see here, okay? This product is constant. And its center of mass is not stationary. What happens when I position this guy in an n equals four orbit? For n equals four, the center of mass lies smack in the middle and this can be probably proven due to certain symmetries of parallelograms, right? What happens if I move this guy around? Now he's not constant. Now this path, we've analyzed it, is circular. The path of C0, the locus of C0 is a circle. What happens if I take it to a focus? Again, I'm moving around on a circle and I'm getting this constancy of products here. So for n equals four, wherever I position this guy, I get product constancy, even for these very asymmetric polygons. 
I have area product constancy. This one might be harder to prove when you place M right in the center, right? So what we're seeing here is an invariance that, and this one can probably be proven through algebra. Now let's go to a higher N. Let's go to N equals 5. N equals 5. No invariances here in area product or area ratio, but if I placed the area smack in the middle, I get a constant area product. If I place it at a focus, neither is invariant. Okay, let's go to n equals 6. Pla place it at a focus, the ratio is invariant. Remember n equals 4? The product was invariant. So here we're getting an n mod 4 phenomenon again. The ratio of areas is invariant for n equals 6. Let's check. Let's go to n equals 8. n equals 8. The product is invariant. How about n equals 10? The ratio is invariant. So it looks like n minus 2 mod 4 uh, produces invariant ratios, and n mod 4 produces invariant products. Okay? So, for example, here's n mod 4, 4 equals 0, so I'm getting this invariant product. Very cool. Now, the other thing that we're noticing here, and this could be an optical illusion, is that C0 is not moving. Let's check. If C0 is not moving for n equals 6, it is moving. How about n equals 4? It's also moving. n equals 3, obviously, it moves. However, n equals 8, it looks pretty damn stuck. Let's go ahead and increase this aspect ratio. Now we can see that there's some motion. So this was just an optical illusion. It's always good to increase the aspect ratio, make sure that we're not engaging in a, a whispering gallery optical illusion here. But what is not an optical illusion is this product up here. You can see that I'm n equals 8, product at the focus. If I dislocate this guy somewhere else, I continue with a, uh, an invariant product. And if I go up, I continue with an invariant product, even though this polygon is varying wildly. Anyway, I just wanted to give you guys a quick introduction to these explorations regarding uh, areas of pedal polygons, uh, invariances and products and ratios and how those depend uh, on uh, parity of, of N and the N periodic, and also some considerations uh, regarding their motion of centers of mass. Uh, it looks like when we're dealing with the N periodic centers of mass are more movable, except if you're in foci or centers. When we are out in uh, the eccentral polygon, they can remain stuck. All right, uh, one last thing uh, before we part. Uh, I wanted you to notice that there's some other invariants at play here. If you go back to the outer polygon and you forget for a moment about the polygon itself. Uh, let me go ahead and draw it, why not? Here's the polygon and let's make this simpler. Let's make it n equals five, reduce a little bit uh, the aspect ratio. I wanted to point out that there's another really cool invariant at play here, which is the sum of these altitudes squared. Okay, so remember that we were dropping perpendiculars to the sides of, in this case here, the external polygons. If I actually compute the sum of their values squared, amazingly, here it is, this sum is invariant. When you go to even-sided polygons, the sum remains invariant. Now, whether this is uh, 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 related to the stationarity of, of, of its uh, center of mass remains to be seen, but it does seem like these two quantities are, are pretty related. Uh, if we do the same type of calculation for uh, the pedal polygon of the n periodic, so I'm showing that sum squared here as well. You can see that this sum does not remain constant. Okay, uh, if I place the guy at the center, it's still not constant. And if I place, place it at one of the foci, it's still not constant. What is constant here seems like if I am at one of the foci, and that's an interesting variance right there. Let's check it is true. Yes, it is. So let me go back. What seems to be uh, Staying invariant is the product of these lengths. Okay, so that's another phenomenon there that we've just uh, uncovered. So uh, thank you very much, 
And uh, hopefully, if you have any ideas on how to prove these phenomena, let me know. Thank you.